Baptist Church. And yes, it's that Holy Ghost power. We want to welcome you here at Community Baptist, 1620 Sonoma Avenue. We are live streaming right now here on Facebook. All of you out in Facebook land, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Reverend Parker. And yes, we are just so glad that you're here today. We just want to welcome you here. Welcome you, welcome you, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Take, a, take some time and let's praise the Lord. Let's bless him. Let's lift up his holy name. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy because he's so faithful. Yes, it's our God. He's holy. Yes, it's Holy Ghost power. That Holy Ghost power that God has given each and every one of us. That Holy Ghost power that within each and every one of us. Oh, Lord, we just got to let go and let God have his way in each and every one of us, each and every day. It's all about what God has already done when he gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us, let us go into the house of the Lord because we know that in the house of the Lord there be some praising and worshiping going on. So is there praising and worship going up in your house right now? You should be praising our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For just waking you up, starting you on your way today. It's all about what God has already done and what he's doing right now. He's done so much while you were sleeping. <laughs> yes, God has done so much while you were just closing your eyes and waking up. Even as you were stretching out before you got out of bed, God has already done enough. Yes, he's given us air to breathe, but he gave us more than that. He's given us eternal life. That life that's only in Christ Jesus. And we need to just be able to praise him and worship and glorify him. It's just a great day to be here again. We want to welcome you. We ask that you all get your coffee and your breakfast together. I know you're already up because you've been waiting a very long time for us and for the Lord and Savior to come and just give you a word of encouragement to keep you going, to keep you strong. And I just want to just thank you all. For It says in Hebrew 4 and 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, yeah, piercing yeah. even the dividing of the thunder, yeah. of the soul and spirit, yeah. and of the joints yeah. and marrow, and the discern of the thoughts and intents yeah. of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all oh. things are naked and open yeah. unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Yes, it's all about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's all about what he's done and what he's going to do. Yes, he wants to be a blessing to you, for you, and around you. And he wants to bless you. And so we need to just open up and give our Lord all that he deserves. He deserves so much from each and every one of us. Yes, he does. Because he's given us that Holy Ghost power. Do you have it in you today? Do you know that you have it? Do you know that you know that you know that you got it? You got to know it in order to show it. And so, Father God, we just want to say thank you for the Holy Ghost Spirit that indwells each and every one of us. Yeah. It's that Holy Ghost power. Lord, oh, that's going to be on my mind all day long now. Okay. <laughs> and so now we prepare to just uh, open up with our Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to read the King James Version. You read the version you have. Gather your friends up, text them. Let's all get together and let's pray to our Father. He allow us to call him Father. And that's a blessing right there. So let us pray right now. Our Father, which are in heaven, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen and amen yes it's just a glorious day we like to welcome all of you here this is Sunday July 12th excuse me uh and we just want you to be safe and secure out there. Um, we're live here on, you can visit our website at www.cbssr.org. You can reach us by phone at 707-546-0744 or email us at cbc1620 at at 
The address is 1620 Sonoma Avenue, Santa Rosa, California, uh, 95405. My P.O. box is 4317, Santa Rosa, California, uh, 95402. We have this summer, we're going to have a Zoom Summer Revival. That's August 4th and 8th, 4, August 4th through the 8th. And we would like you all to be there because we're going to have some really powerful men of God bringing the word of God to revive your soul. You know revival starts with you. And so that means you need to join us for this revival so that you can have your soul and your spirit revived. We have Facebook page. We have um, Community Baptist Church here in Santa Rosa. All our videos are uploaded uh, to our YouTube channel at CBC. 1620 live make sure you click on one of those uh and subscribe buttons to get your not to get notified when the new video is uploaded and it's important that you all get into a bible study we're doing this all week long and it's important that you want to uh learn more about our lord and savior on tuesday night we have uh at 6 30 we have our women's bible study and it's called Coffee with Christ. It's Zoom live, uploaded uh, to your YouTube channel weekly. Materials are shared on screen, and so you can follow along. We have Sister Maria who will be teaching that class, and a host of others there that are constantly there. And it's a really great class for you women. So you need to just join in and be a part of learning who thus says the Lord because God wants has more for you to learn about him and so we need to know as much as we can about our Lord and Savior um, Wednesday Wednesday we have our noonday Bible study with brother Jim Kennedy um, you can also load that up uh, upload that to YouTube weekly that's uploaded to YouTube weekly excuse me uh, and materials are shared on the screen, and we are concluding our series, Living with Hope in a Broken World. Yes, it's not so much that the world is broken, as that we are all broken vessels, and we know not what we should do. And so we need to just uh, tune in and learn what thus says the Lord. This is uh, will be a, a special focus. Um, how should I respond to politics? And Brother Jim would know how to do that. And so we're going to look to Brother Jim to give us that word. Hallelujah. And uh, he's going to give you a word of how to respond. And that's Wednesday, a noonday Bible study. <laughs> then 6.30, that same day, we have our adult Bible study with our uh, pastor, uh, Reverend H. Lee Turner. Uh, it's an adult Bible study. It's on Facebook Live. And we'll be reading uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 21. This has also been a great uh, uh, teaching here by our pastor. Uh, there's so much in there. And he's uh, bringing it to life for us. I mean, when you study the word of God, it comes to life. But to have the man of God bringing it to us, it gets even better and better uh, each time he teaches it. And so we need to just continue to just tune in. And he'll be there, and you should be there too. And that's also at CBC 1620 uh, Live uh, on YouTube. And we have our children's Bible study with Sister uh, Genevieve McDowell. It has pre recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel every Wednesday night. Uh, this week's lesson is Gideon obeyed, Gideon obeyed God. And so we all need to be obeying God. And Gideon was a great example of, of doing what God uh, had him to do. And so get your children there so that they can learn. Uh, and then you can go back and, and share it with them. Make sure you're sitting there too and have the Bible open so the kids can really get in depth. I mean, homeschooling, this is the best schooling you can get right here. And that's uh, with our uh, sister Genevieve McDowell. And that'll be done um, at 6.30. What, I don't know what time that shows. After Bible study, it's uploaded. 
after Bible study is uploaded. So you can see that too. Um, and then Thursday, we have our special needs Bible study, uh, taught by Sister uh, Marie Dwyer again. It's pre recorded and it's uploaded to our YouTube channel. Uh, materials are shared on screen. And stories about the prophets who warned Israel. Elisha and the Invisible Army is this week's lesson. And so you can watch that. That is, I mean, all of these are just great Bible studies that you need to get into. Get in tune with the Bible. You can't say that uh, you know the Bible if you're not in the Bible study. Because there's always something you need to know and, and God wants to show you. Uh, I enjoy it myself. And you will too if you just open your hearts up and receive what the Spirit has to say to you. Let your spirit be fed. Don't, don't have a diet of just coming here Sunday. We want to see you during the week. So tune in. And that's Thursday. Then it's Thursday night. Oh boy. We have uh, the choir Bible study with the one and only Reverend Parker pre-recorded, <laughs> uploaded to you. Uploaded to you. It's uploaded. Yes, it is uploaded to you on YouTube channel uh, uh, weekly. The lesson page is shared on screen. And this week will be Godly Self Acceptance. Yeah, you know, God's been giving us great words every week. And God, He just, like I say, He wants to share what He has for us. And that's, we need to just be in these Bible studies. Then Friday night, we have our. Uh, 7 p.m. adult Bible study with our pastor, H.B. Uh, Turner. Uh, it's Facebook Live again, 1620 CBC, uh, 1620, uh, CBC 1620 Live, excuse me. Get that kind of confused sometimes. Um, and so he'll be in First Chronicles chapter 27. That's next Friday. Lessons are uploaded to your YouTube channel weekly. And so we also have something new here, Saturday at 2 p.m., Boot Camp, the Basic Biblical Orientation, Zoom Live with the one and only Pastor H. Lee Turner. Meeting link will be uh, posted on our Facebook page tonight. Oh, okay. Lessons will be uploaded to you on YouTube again. Materials shared on screen. And so we need to just continue to learn what thus says the Lord because you can never have enough. And even if you think you know it all, you can go back to the, the uh, basic and get something new and hold on to it. Because I know you need to go back through it uh, time and time again because there's so much. God says He only gave us so much because we couldn't handle too much. And so. He wanted to stay longer, but he had to get on. And so he had to go because he had someone else to send, and that was the Holy Spirit that indwells each and every one of you. Saturday at 5 p.m. That's Saturday night prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. You need to be there. You need to be um, on your bended knees or on your favorite couch, on your favorite lounge chair. And just opening your heart up to God. Um, we ask that you send your prayer request. That's too with Facebook Live. And we want you to pray with us, you know. Um, it's important that we get a corporate prayer going on here. So that everybody is praying. Because God wants to hear from each and every one of us. And so we need to just continue to pray. Pray for the world. Pray for the ones that are still lost in this world. Uh, pray for the, this virus, that God takes this virus out. We know he has the answer, um, so we need to turn to him. And then Sunday at 9 a.m., we have our Sunday school with uh, Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner teaching that class again. And that's coming from Romans, uh, the book of Romans. Uh, and we're in chapter 4, and that's been, oh, so uplifting. And so we need to continue to study the word of God, read your scripture, know, you got to know, got to know, got to know that you have salvation in the Lord, that you've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, you got to know. And so the pastor has taken us to that, and, and that's another good class. Um, this morning was great for all of those that was there this morning. I'm sure you know that it was by faith 
uh, that Abraham trusted God and obeyed God. And the question is, are you trusting and obeying God and doing his will? And you need to read that for yourself and you need to tune in with us. Uh, and, and we're here, we're here. So we just want to give you back what uh, God has given us. And he has so much to give us. And then here at 10 a.m., we got our Sunday church service. And this too is live and in color. Yes, we're right here, live in color, coming to you right now. Uh, Facebook Live 16, CDC 1620 Live. That's what we're doing right now. We also have our toddler church after this service with Sister Diane Edwards and Pastor Turner and the puppets. Yeah, get those little ones in front of that 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 TV and or that computer screen and and let them uh, learn what thus says the Lord. This week uh, uh, lesson is Isaac was kind, and that's so good for the toddlers because they need to learn how to share. A lot of times kids don't know how to share because they're not taught how to, and because everything is mine, 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 mine. And we got to get that out because we got people that grow up with that. Everything is mine, 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 mine. And it's nothing that's yours. It all belongs to the Lord. And so we need to uh, let them know that uh, the lesson they would learn today is Isaac was kind. And so we need to be kind to our fellow brothers and sisters and those who are still lost in this world. And that's on uh, CBC 1620 uh, Live. And you can see all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this is for you. Free. Free. A free gift from God. Oh my God. Okay, you missed it. <laughs> free gift. Thank you, Lord. God gave you life, eternal life, free. He died, but he rose again. And he promised us that we can go into heaven with him living forever, ever with him in paradise. Oh, I thank him for doing what he's done because he's given each and every one of us a free gift of salvation that is only given from our Lord. And so I'm just so glad that you're here this morning. I know you're ready to, to welcome our pastor, our leader, the, the, the man that's carrying uh, the bloodstained banner. Do you want to, we're going to pray first. And we're going to have Reverend, <laughs> Reverend Francis come up and lead us in prayer and give him a warm welcome wherever you are. Say, go, Reverend Francis, pray your heart out. Here he comes, y'all. Amen. God bless your hearts. Can we say amen? Amen. Can we say amen again? Amen. amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning and closing me in my right mind and giving me a portion of health and strength. Yes, Lord. And for that, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, for sending your two angels, my Heavenly Father, yes. this morning, grace and mercy. Yes, thank you. Lord, to allow me to see another day. Yes, Lord. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you, my Heavenly thank Father, because you. you've been too good to me. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you've been too kind to me. Thank you. Oh, my Heavenly Father, from the early existence of time, the early existence since I was born, my Heavenly Father, you uh, put your love, your lovely angels around me, man. Yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being the King of Kings. Uh -huh. Thank you for being the Lord of Lords. Yeah. Thank you for being the priest, Prince of Peace. Yeah. Right. I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Somebody needs you this morning, my Heavenly Father, calling on you. Yeah. On their sick bed, they're calling on you, Ma, my Heavenly Father. And I thank you, my Heavenly Father. Yeah. Ask you to keep us safe, my Heavenly Father. Oh, As this world goes through a whole lot of change, my Heavenly Father. Yeah. But I will keep on pressing on. Yeah. I will keep on pressing on to the high mark, my Heavenly Father. Because you made me, you know all about me. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being the God of God. Yeah. Oh, thank you, my Heavenly Father. I'm asking you right now. Lord, touch our church members who can't be here today. Yes, Physically, Lord. my Heavenly Father, yes. but they're on Facebook, my Heavenly Father. Touch them in a special way. Lord, it's been a long time since we gathered, my Heavenly Father, in this building, but you're still God. 
Yes, Lord. Yeah, you're still God, man. Yes. Yes. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, for being good. Yes. Thank you, my Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you. Thank somebody you. needs you. Somebody call yes. them over. And I'm asking my Heavenly Father to please continue to let Community Baptist Church be a lighthouse on this corner. Yes. And Lord, my Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to touch our pastor this morning. Yes. Lord, give him that uh, thing that make yes. preaching yes. easy, my Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Oh, Lord, send your Holy Ghost down. Yes. Oh, Lord, I'm asking right now, give him a preach word that the Spirit has to say to the church. Yes. Lord, we love you today. Yes. We glorify you. Yes. Lord, I'm asking my Heavenly Father to touch Reverend Parker and his family, my Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Lord, I'm asking Father. Pick, build him up where it's weak and strip him where it's torn down. Yes, Match him right now in the name of Jesus. Thank Touch my family, my Heavenly Father. Yes, oh, I need you, my Heavenly Father. Somebody out there needs you for one thing and somebody needs you for another. Yes, oh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Because you've been too good. Yes, he has. And you've been too kind. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These are another blessing we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, hallelujah. joining us in our Bible studies and participating. And I always say, share with others also who might not be as uh, technologically savvy as yourself. Share with them so they can also join in and continue their Bible study. <laughs> As we are continuing still on our series in Acts chapter 12, mm -hmm. God still gives us keys to open doors. All right. And I am excited mm -hmm. about what God has done, what he's doing uh, through this word. There's a lot to glean in there. There's still a lot more. I hopefully can get through where I need to get through today. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm anticipating one, maybe two more times of God still gives us keys to open doors because I think it's important that we know what those keys are. Yes. And so when we see here, and we talked about uh, the attitude of the mind, we talked about um, praying uh, without ceasing. Peter was apprehended and put in jail. And he was set in between two, uh, in between soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, he delivered him to four uh, quartinians <laughs> of soldiers. That's a body. And they intending to, after Easter, to uh, cut his head off. And, uh, and uh, people were praying for Peter. And we see in this fifth verse. And, uh, so Herod would have brought him the same night uh, Peter was sleeping 
between two soldiers bound with chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. In verse 7, an angel of the Lord we talked about came upon him and the light shined in the prison. We talked about bringing light to a situation and smote him, struck him. Wake up on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from his hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Gird thyself and bind. And so, and bind only thy sin. And he did so. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And it was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they passed the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth to the city, which opened to them of its own accord when they went out and passed through the street. And forthwith the angel departed from them. <clears throat> In these areas of the passage of Scripture, if you notice when Peter stood up, the chains fell off. Now we know that Peter didn't have personal power to break those chains. Right. But when he stood up, Come on. when he walked by faith and not by sight, yes. when he did in obedience to God, what God told him to do, yes. uh, the chains were broken. And I'm, I'm here to share with you chains of all types might still be binding you. Mm. Maybe they're chains of depression, chains of despair. Mm. But it took a change, not chains, a change yeah. of attitude right. that caused him to stand up. So inspired him that when he stood up, the chains fell down. He had to put off, he had put off for too long uh, his goal, his God-given goal. Yeah. His someday was that day, or you can say your someday is today. That's right. Uh, for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, God was involved to let him know that the time had come for him to bust a move. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Go, Peter. <laughs> that's that's a, an ex, extra biblical yes, Hebrew yes. Greek yes. transliteration. Yes. Peter, it's time to bust a move. And I'm telling you, it's time to bust a move. In other words, uh, you've got to stand up and, and, and begin, be prepared to do God's will. Don't have excuses. Because right. excuses can cause your chains to stay to hold you. Oh my. Here we go. Maybe your excuse is someday. But I'm here to tell you that there's no Sunday on your calendar. Right. You'll never accomplish your God-given goals or your life purpose if you keep pushing them off. The best intentions won't do you any good without a clear purpose and plan from God. It takes faith in God, belief in you and perseverance. Mm -hmm. Faith in God, belief in you and perseverance. Amen. Maybe you're waiting to take 
reaction until you feel ready. If you wait until you feel ready to tackle something tough, you might be waiting for a long time. Hallelujah. Likely that you're going to gain a certain burst of inspiration out of the blue. Somebody thinks you're going to gain a sudden burst of inspiration out of the blue. It usually is very unlikely that it happens. You have to change with inspiration. Uh, also comes uh, uh, the, the action. You might be inspired to do something, but if you don't do nothing about it, all you're going to have is something churning on the inside. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we have to change our behavior. Look at what Peter did. He was sleeping, he woke up, he changed, he stood up. Mm -hmm. He changed his behavior. Right. Why are you going to stand up in jail? He's bound. Mm. So we start with steps, little steps. Because you try to start too, too, too fast, you will be overwhelmed. Yes. And you won't. You'll go back and go to sleep and be bound. Maybe you're in a tough position. Peter was in a tough position. And I want you to know that when you do things for God, you're going to encounter tough times. Yes, Lord. Things that don't kill you only make you stronger. That's right. Peter was facing certain death in a couple of hours. Mm, he had accepted the world's plan for his life. However, God stepped in with another plan. Yes, he did. Always consult God mm -hmm. to ensure that his plan for you and your plans are the same. Yeah. And let me say this. And you need to repeat after me. You're going to make mistakes. Amen. Uh, just, I know. You, you get that donut out your mouth. Get that cinnamon roll out your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Put them grits and eggs and bacon down for a minute. <laughs> and just say, I'm going to make mistakes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But you can't view them as failure. You have to recognize that you're going to mess up sometimes. Yeah. But rather than declare uh, that you're a dismal failure, mm -hmm. use that energy to create a plan to move forward. Right. Amen. Amen. Those chains that bound us. We, we think, oh, I made a mistake. Mm. I don't want to make mistakes. Nobody wants to make mistakes. Yeah, it's crazy. But <laughs> Life <laughs> has taught us yes. <laughs> that mistakes, making mistakes, is a part of life. Hallelujah. But we can get back on track. Yes, we can. Another chain is thinking that uh, making change is not going to take work. It takes work. It's easy to say you want to make a change. But to actually do the work yes. is more difficult. Mm. You have to decide what kind of priority you're going to give your God-given goal. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your attention will get lost along all your other daily activities. So again, start taking one step today toward that God-given purpose if you haven't already done so. Start doing it today or at the latest tomorrow, but I'm doing today because tomorrow's not guaranteed to all of us. And remember, tomorrow never comes. Make the decision. Do, do some things today Amen. to break those chains. These are chains that bind us from doing God's purpose. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Binding us 
myself. And I know we're, we're tackling new goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, tackling those new goals is easy, but sticking with it right, amen. is hard. <laughs> Yes. I'm saying these things because these are truths yes, are. that you're going to have to deal with along the way. And when you come along the way, when them chains try to bind you back up or try to pull you back into prison, yes. you got a way out. Amen. That's good, brother. You have to decide. Uh, you have to mentalize mm -hmm. within yourself Reminding yourself, you got to work hard to achieve these God-given purposes, God-given goal. You're going to have to work hard. Yes, Lord. Doesn't matter your skills or your talents, because He's already given you all you need yes. to do what you need to do. Come on. Peter was a fisherman. But he wasn't fishing. He wasn't fishing that got him in jail. Right. <laughs> it was. It was doing God's work. Yes. Amen. Jesus told him, "Follow me. I'll make you fishers of men." That's right. Amen. And when you fish men, <laughs> other men is going to come at you. Right. Yes. So you have to mentalize, and that's my word, mentalize. You can look in the dictionary, you won't find it. Mentalize within yourself that you're going to work hard to achieve those God-given goals. He's already given you the talent and the skills you need to be able to do it. And those that you don't have, he'll put people around you who have them. Yes. Another goal is impatience. Because the enemy wants you to give up. Yes. Give up before you see the results. But don't give up. Just because you don't see results it doesn't mean that your efforts are, are wasted. Right. You need to stick to it. And then sometimes it may take longer than what you don't. Yes. Before you experience lasting change. Amen. Would Peter have seen the chains fall if he is afraid and sabotaged himself? Yes. <laughs> Right. 
you're really excited about changing your life, you might be tempted to set the bar too high. Mm -hmm. Don't set it too high. If you take on too much too fast, you set yourself up for failure. Yes. That's why I said earlier, take little steps. Focusing too much on the big goal can be overwhelming. Yes, amen. Establish short-term objectives and celebrate each milestone along the way. Yes. Every time you do something, just give God some praise. Now, when Peter stood up, the chains fell down. Yes. And then the angel said to him in verse 8, Gird yourself, tie on your sandals. Mm -hmm. and so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing God told Moses to tell the people the night before they were delivered out of Egypt. Look at Exodus 12 and 11. And thus you shall eat it with your belt on your waist and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. <laughs> Pack it up. Get ready. To be delivered. Right. When you get ready to be delivered from, you have to, you have to be delivered from that old way and moved by God's command. You can't have on those old clothes. Mm -hmm. That old lifestyle's got to go. Those old ways are not His ways. You have to take uh, off uh, the old ways and let it go. You have to. Say bye bye, Arriba Dirce, hasta luego, hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Say bye bye to the old way. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the reason is, you see, a slave can't think the same like a free person. Right. <laughs> if you bound, then you talk like a slave. But if you free, you talk like a person who God has freed, who gave you, made you, and gave you the authority, his authority, yes. to do his will, oh, yes. his way. Yes, Lord. And that's why I said, put on your garment and follow me. Amen. 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 Now, look at Isaiah 61 and 3, when it says, put on your garment. And follow me. Isaiah 61 and 3. Uh, let me see because I believe I want to go 1 through 3. Uh, Isaiah 61. Verses 1 through 3. Very well known. New Testament. As you find this in the New Testament, this is what Jesus said. He preached this in one of the synagogues, sent out mm -hmm. after he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, the opening of the prison to them that are, are, are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Verse 3, and appointed to them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness, they uh, that they might be uh, called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Amen. The garment of praise right. 
for the spirit of heaviness. God gives us a garment to put on. This garment of praise on, is visible uh, to all who see you. Yes. It covers everything you do. Right. Imagine the joy mm. that lives inside the person who glorifies his Savior that is clothed him like a garment. Yes, Lord. Jesus is working to bring healing yes. and restoration to our hearts. Yes, he, is. he wants his people uh, to be joyful and whole. Um, so somebody right now, right now had decided to put on a new garment. Yes. Sized by God. Mm -hmm. And fits perfectly. Yes. You see, my garment is not your garment. Come on. And your garment is not my garment. Even though the garment has the same purpose. It's a garment of praise and worship. But I can't wear your garment. Uh -huh. I got to wear the garment that God has prepared for me. Yes. Mm. Same joy ought to come out of it. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Then he says, follow me. Quit following yeah. somebody else and follow me. Yeah. In other words, God has to be, be our guide. Right. God has to be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. God has to be the one who leads us uh, through the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God! Yeah. Amen. Mm. So, uh, it says he went out and followed him. He went out and followed him. But he didn't know whether it was an angel because he thought he saw a vision. Mm. <laughs> he didn't know. Right. All this had happened. He didn't know if he was awake or asleep seeing a vision or an angel. Was this real or not? Is it live or is it remember that spot? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but it's not, it's okay if you don't know. God knows. Yes, amen. But he has sense enough to stand up, chains fell off, and fought, girded himself, hmm. got ready. Right. So you got to get ready. Right, get ready. You got to get ready to do what God has you to do. Because he still gives us keys yes. to open doors. Yes, oh. And so he followed him. Mm -hmm. uh, in verse 10, when they pass the first and the second, some say guard posts. Some say gates. We're going to call them doors. Yes. Mm. Uh, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which was opened of its own accord. Mm -hmm. And they went out and went down one street. Immediately, the angel departed from him. Now, now, now this is... You know, let me stop for a moment. God works in threes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he unveils his will in threes. Mm -hmm. He unveils his purpose and his agenda in threes. Right. The thing about threes, the third dimension is always the greatest. Come on. And let me give you an example. God ordained time would be set up in threes. Past, present, but the greatest of these Come on. is future. Yes, Lord. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Now abide faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these yeah. is love. Mm. That third. Matthew 14, 6. I am the way truth, and the life. But the greatest emphasis is on life because he says, I come that you might, that to give you life and that more abundantly, and he's also come to give us eternal life. The greatest of these is 
Three different types of mindset. Right. There's Orba who goes back. Yes. There's uh, Naomi who goes halfway because she's bitter. Right. But then there's Ruth yeah. who presses all the way through. Yes, yeah. she did. Mm -hmm. The greatest of these, yeah. the book is named after. <laughs> Joseph had three strippings. The first stripping was when his brothers took it his coat often. The second stripping is when he ran out of Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife was holding his coat. Mm -hmm. But the third stripping was the greatest. Yeah. That was when he took off his prison clothes mm -hmm. and shaved himself because he was going to go from the prison to the palace. That's right. God usually works in threes. Mm -hmm. He unveils uh, his will in threes. He unveils his purpose and his agenda in threes. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at three doors. Yeah. What are these three doors that we're talking about in Acts? I'm glad you asked. In verse 11, uh, it says that Peter No, let me see. And when Peter had come to himself, he says, now I know for surety that the Lord has sent his angel and he has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and out of the expectation of the people of the Jews. And, and, and there it is right there. The first door that Peter had to go through was the attack of Herod. Mm -hmm. This attack had nothing to do with what was going on. Right. It had to do with his future. Mm. Oh, every time God raised up a deliverer, every time he raises up somebody that's getting ready to step into something significant, the enemy raises up an adversary. Yeah. When God raised up Moses, the enemy raised up a Pharaoh. Mm. When God raised up Jesus, the enemy raised up a Herod yeah. to try to kill all the babies. Mm. When God raised up a Daniel, the enemy raised up a king of Persia to hinder the prayer for 21 days. Oh, mm. um, and so this particular door had nothing to do with where he was, but had to do with where he was going. So if you've been going through hell, you have to press through the attack because the amount of hell that you've been going through is an indication of what you're going to step into. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Let me say that again. If you've been going through hell, yes, and a whole lot of it, yes, the amount of hell that you've been going through <laughs> is an indication of what you're going to step into. Yes. Press on. Yes. Don't give up now. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Just cause you trouble on every side. Yes. Mm. <laughs> That's that attack of Herod.
amount of hell that you've been going through is an indication of what you're going to step into. So don't you dare give up. That's right, not now. Then Peter stepped through that second gate, yes, Lord. which is the expectation <laughs> of people. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Acts chapter 10, verse 20, 28. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for Jewish man to keep company with or go to another nation? But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked, then, uh, for what reason have you sent me? And this was Peter talking about Cornelius. Yes. Peter went, uh, he had seen a vision from God. Uh, yes. And God has shown him, don't you call the things That's right. that I call clean, don't you dare call them unclean. Cornelius, mm. a Gentile, a man of God, yeah. uh, called him to his house. Yeah. And as he was in his household, Peter realized that God is working in this household. Yes, he is. And so the spirit falls upon the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And the whole household was saved. Yeah. The whole household hallelujah. was saved. But then, when he came back, uh, when he headed back to Jerusalem, right. it said he, Peter comes and contended with those of the circumstances circumcision. This is the traditional people. Right. When God shows you something that's so out of the box right. and uh, has you to go places that's so out of the box, it is the traditional people mm. that will hinder you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Their expectations that they put upon you. Look at when Jesus was walking on the water, the only one got out the boat was Peter. Right. And I'm sure there were those traditional people in the boat who were saying, Peter, come back. Right. Who were saying, who we think he is. Right. Who were saying, hmm, he's making us look bad. Right. <laughs> you need to be like us. Come on. Stay in the boat. Right. Safety and security. Peter stepped out and walked on things yeah. that would cause other people to sink. That's right. People around you might not understand you. Mm -hmm. They might talk about you. Right. They, do. they might even tell you how uh, to mess you up with what God has told you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were saved, they tell you if you were saved, you would not Y'all fill in the blanks. You know what they are. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do this or you wouldn't be like that or you wouldn't act like that mm -hmm. if you were saved. Right. Uh, I've had so many people. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. I've had so many people try to come and tell me how to pastor. <laughs> Over 
there. I don't know what it means to be a pilot. What I look like trying to tell the pilot how to fly a plane, he's been trained. On how to fly a plane. He's flown the plane. And here you are. A pew sitter. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. A pew sitter. Give it to him. Give it to him. Don't try to tell a pastor how to pastor the body of Christ. I listen to God, not you. Amen. Amen. And any pastor who is Live by the expectation of the peace of the people. He is you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's pacifying you. Yeah. And I'm not a pacifying type person. Yeah. So you got it. You might have a wrong word with me. Tell preacher. Hallelujah. Just keep it 100. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and listen. Say it loud. I love you, but I love God more. Amen. That's it. And I wish I could do be everything to everybody, but I can't. Amen. And I don't even try. Right. All I can be is true to God and true to who He made me. And if I don't tell you the truth, and listen, who gonna come in your household and tell you how to arrange your furniture? Tell you how? To make rules in your house. They don't pay the mortgage. They don't pay the rent. They don't pay the gas. They don't pay the light. But they're going to come in your house. <laughs> and tell you how to raise your kids. What you going to say? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Mm. Spending money you don't have to spend. That's right. Um. To try to please people who don't even like you. Yeah, amen. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Say it again. How you preaching? <laughs> they drop you down there. Repeat it. Repeat it. People come in your house. Ooh, I don't like that. What you gonna do? Change it? Yeah, come on. They don't like that and they really don't like you. They're just being nosy. Come on. You go pro. <laughs> Trying to live up to the expectation of people. You go broke physically. Mentally, spiritually, Amen. and financially. Amen. Your mind will be who God made you to be. Right. Fulfill that purpose. Right. And he's the one who supplies all of our needs by, your, by his riches and glory. Yes. Jesus. That's good. Second door. God has never spoken to them about your life. Yes. Now, there are people who can come in your life and have godly wisdom and understanding and counsel. Yes. And that's a blessing. Yes. But all this worldly stuff, mm. y'all can take it someplace else. Mm. Don't you dare put your purpose for God's plan in the hands of others' expectations. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare think of it. That's right. To snag the second gate. That means that they're trying, you're trying to please people, not God. Right. You got to press through the expectations of others. Mm -hmm. Their expectation is their convenience at the expense of your inconvenience. Amen. Amen. Ooh. Their expectation is their convenience at the expense <laughs> of your inconvenience. Uh, you all serve notice that you will serve God even if they are inconvenienced. Serve notice that I promise him that I will serve him till I die. Amen. Don't you dare give up. Give out. <laughs> give in to the expectations of others. Don't you dare put it in their hands. Because we're in God's hands. People might 
tell you they like you if you do this. Or you might think that they'll like you if I do this. If I, if, if I lose weight, they'll like me. If I gain a few more pounds, they'll like me. If I change my hair, they'll like me. If I dress like them, they'll like me. If I act like them, they'll like me. But I, 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 let me tell you, they ain't gonna like you. They don't like you. If they don't like you in the first place, you can't cover all that stuff over with nothing. They don't like you if you don't, if you, if you one way or the other. Try to do those things that will get them to like you, but you need to serve notice. That whether you like me or not, I will serve the Lord. As long as I can like myself. Right. See, uh, love God. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, <laughs> if they have a problem with you and yourself, <laughs> then you take yourself to dinner uh, and get you and yourself a table and set up a seat for you and self and say to yourself, <laughs> you look good. Come on. Self. That's right. You look good all by your doggone self. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get yourself, put yourself a grill. Play it over there and whatever you want to be. Self, <laughs> who? <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> the head at? You all that? Okay, that's right. You feel good today, self. That's right. Don't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How we looking today, self? Don't we look good? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else might not think so, but self do. That's right. And God certainly does. That's right. Amen. And if you have to be by yourself. Then be okay with that. Yes. Because God isolates us sometimes yes. for his purpose. That's that second door. Do not try to let the expectations of others cause you to not fulfill your God-given purpose. Because the Bible says that Peter went through the first door mm -hmm. or gate. That's right. And then Peter went through the second gate. Mm -hmm. But when he got to the third gate, Something strange happened. Come on. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you go through the attack of Herod and you can get through the expectation of people, you're going to be stepping through a door that you won't have to open. <laughs> you won't have to open that door. That door just open. Yes, Hallelujah. He took the chains off and he opened the door. Right. If you trust in God. You won't have to chase this one down. Mm. You won't have to bring. God will bring you to the door. You're going to step through the door. Right. And all the haters, mm. all the expectors, right. Ooh, there. all the attackers, mm -hmm. it's going to blow their mind because they are the ones who said you would never do it, you would never be, you would never, ever, ever, hmm.
darkness of the cell and the prison that I was in. I made it to this final gate where God opens the door. Yeah. You don't have to open that. I know I'm right about it. Yeah, you are. God has opened doors for me yeah, yeah. Uh, that nobody else could open. He made my enemies hold the door open for me. He made my enemies prepare a table before me. <laughs> right in their presence. He made my adversaries my footstool. He made a way out of nowhere. Because he's a way maker. I'm here to tell you that God still gives us keys to open doors. And when you do it God's way, I guarantee he's got a door waiting for you to go through, but you got to press through. Yeah. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling. You got to press your way through. You got to press your way through that, that attack on your future. You got to press your way through them chains. You got to press your way through uh, the expectations of other people and me, you. You got to press through and keep on walking and keep on walking by faith and not by sight. You got to press through. What a shame it would be yes, it is. if you spent your whole life yes. and never made it through that door <laughs> that God has for you. Yes, Lord. The whole city opened up. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in there. That's right. It says, uh, and they went out. That's right. uh, he said, uh, in verse 10, when they were past the first and second ward or door gate, they came into an iron gate, an iron gate, ironclad. That's the, that's the greatest of these. Them other doors might have been wood. Okay. But the greatest one is an iron gate. That's right. The iron gate. Mm -hmm. That leadeth to the city. Open up the key to the city. Which opened to them of his own accord. Yeah, Automatically. That's right. You know, you had those doors now that when you walk in front of them, they sense you and they just open. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they had that. Peter had that one. That's right. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> he got there today. Just, what is that to the city. Somebody just took Peter's idea and put it into today's usage. Yes, they did. And it says, and they went out and passed through one street and forth with the angel departed. Now they were walking by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. They were walking in the city. Mm. The gate to the city had opened up. In other words, the gate to the world not only that, the gate to the heavenly city That's right. had opened up. And that opens up. Mm. It begins with a relationship with Christ. You cannot stand and be complete and whole within yourself right. apart from Jesus Christ. Amen. Apart from being saved by the blood of the Lamb. You will always be uh, under the expectations of people. You will always be bound by the attack of Herod who has sights on your future. Why does he have sights on your future? Because he knows that if God ever gets this person, if God ever slaps him and wakes him up, enlightens him, uh, have him stand up. Yeah. Then he'll knock the chains off. That's right. And have him go through some doors. That's right. And once they get to that final door, the world opens up. Yes, Lord. He knows that. He knows it. And he don't like it. Mm. Not doing in there. But that's a certain a good place to be. That's right. When the doors are open to us. The first door that's open is Jesus Christ. The Bible says he stands at the door and knocks. 
And it's up to us to open that door. Mm -hmm. He's not going to kick in that door. He's right. not going to automatically open that door. You have to open that door and let him in. Yes. And right. once he comes in, it says, he will sup with you and you with him. In other words, you'll enjoy the food that he's prepared for Amen. us Amen. for eternity, all eternity. Mm. And the, the last gate, mm. and we talk about Peter, there's one more gate that'll be open to us. <laughs> Some people call them the pearly gates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to the pearly gate, yeah. you don't want them to say, oh, no, you got to go the other way, baby. That's right. You say, come on in. Come on in. Uh, my wow. good and faithful servant. Yes, Lord. Job well done. Mm. You made it through them gates down. In the world now, you can make it on up to here. So God still gives us keys to open doors. Yes, he does. Still more in there. Yeah. But these keys, I'm hoping that they help you in life. You have to be just all the way sold out. Amen. You, you, you have to say, you know, I can't, I can't do it the way the world does it. Right. I got to do it the way God has me to do it. Mm -hmm. No matter what anybody else thinks. Because it's God who made me, not we ourselves. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. Yes. Follow him. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, follow me. And he tells us, as you go, <clears throat> Make disciples of them. Yes. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's one of the things that he asks us to do. And he says, teaching them all those things that I have taught you. And lo, I am with you to the ends of the eons of the age. And so, Keys. He still gives us keys yes. to open doors, and there's still another door <laughs> that needs to be open. And I'm gonna preach about that the next time I'm up here. So we're not quite finished. We get close, but I hope you've been blessed by it. Yes. I've been blessed by studying it and researching. I've been blessed by knowing that others are blessed by it. And so we thank God for you. Uh, you uh, get through those attacks that are trying to stop you from fulfilling the purpose that God has for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for showing us that we have an enemy who's been raised up to cause us to trip up to cause us to stay bound, not because of where we are now, because if we have not accepted Christ by now, mm. he's got us right where he wants us. Yes, but he knows, he knows that if we ever get a light from heaven mm -hmm. to shine on our hearts, our minds, our souls, that we can break free mm. and our future uh, looks bright in your hands and not in his. And Lord, deliver us from the expectations of others who they think we should be and help us to be God who you know and made us to be. And God, we look as we continue to pass through that final iron gate uh, in this world. this all in the strong and the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And thank God. God bless you. This is our prayer. God keep you. Amen.